and we can start. All yes. right. Then uh, saying, saying welcome, warm welcome to everyone. Uh, I'm Laimonas Ragauskas, together with my colleague Nerius Kriuchunas. We are facilitators of the massive open online course on Erasmus Plus funding opportunities for youth. And within that course, uh, we launched a series of uh, webinars uh, linked to youth exchanges mainly. Uh, so this June, we already had one webinar about uh, youth involvement and youth role in youth exchanges. We had a second webinar about different uh, tools and good practices in youth exchanges. And in this third webinar, we are looking at um, specifics of youth exchanges and youth worker mobility and what are the uh, similarities but also mainly what are the key differences and key aspects of these two formats. Uh, both formats are under the same key action one uh, and it's about learning mobilities but uh, we're gonna be exploring what's the difference between youth exchange um, and youth worker mobility. So we are broadcasting now also on Facebook. If anyone is watching us, feel free to use comment section there uh, to ask questions. My colleague Nerius will be uh, checking the comments and, and forwarding your questions back to us. The same for those who joined uh, here, uh, feel free to actually ask questions at any time and we'll, we'll try to go through them and, and and answer those or and discuss specific issue so it's totally okay if you also go with microphone with the video um, here uh, and I'd like to then welcome our two guest speakers uh, both of them experienced youth workers and trainers from Serbia uh, and uh, the first one will be um, uh, Vladimir Budalic better known as Budja in Serbia and also beyond. Um, uh, he will be more uh, focusing on youth exchanges. Uh, and then my colleague uh, Snežna Bačlija Knoch, uh, also from Serbia, but actually now sitting in a beautiful library in Portugal. Uh, so uh, Snežna will be uh, more exploring the aspects of youth worker mobility, what is special about that action, how different it is from youth exchanges and what are the kind of specific aspects of this format. And thanks a lot for, for both of you for dedicating some, some time um, here in the middle of the summer and sharing your knowledge and expertise. Thanks for having us. All right. So probably, Budja, we'll start from you and uh, from looking at the specifics of youth exchanges and a bit also differences from the youth worker mobility. Thanks for the warming welcome and uh, hello from Serbia. Um, and uh, congratulations on managing to pronounce my full name and surname. Um, but yeah, for, for all, all the others, uh, you can call me Buja. That's the nickname that is somehow uh, being used by, by all. Um, I work at uh, Vodian Environmental Movement as a youth program coordinator and a youth worker. And we're going to go through some key aspects of youth exchanges and see how they compare to mobility of youth workers. So I'm going to go for the share screen option. And we can start with the presentation. So I hope you can all see. Yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, we start with almost like a, a introduction to a, a big event. So it's youth exchanges versus youth worker mobility. Um, but they are not really competing each other. They're quite complementary. But still, there are some uh, key key differences that uh, people should be aware of, because something that we have been discussing uh, even before is that. Uh, sometimes people are confusing the two terms and uh, that some mixtures are happening uh, that maybe are not supposed to. So some key, key elements that we are going to uh, speak about today uh, about youth exchanges is that uh, they're quite youth oriented. 
uh, that they're often a stepping stone for some people, it's often their first international mobility, that they are still learning oriented, so uh, the planned learning should happen. And then we're going to discuss uh, youth exchange leaders and the difference between the leaders and uh, uh, the trainers. So let's start off with um, the key thing. So um, the youth exchanges are youth oriented. And if you look up the, uh, the, what is written in the guide, you'll find out that it's meant for young people from 13 to 30. So there's a big uh, span, uh, age span that can be used. Whereas in the mobilities, it doesn't have to. What uh, is sometimes recommended that if you're working with teenagers or uh, the younger people, then you would try to focus uh, maybe ages from 13 to 14 or maybe 15 to 18 and then not to have everybody mixed, uh, mixed together. And then one of the really, really, really important things is that it's based on needs of young people. And then the young people uh, should plan and implement the program. So basically, um, in ideal youth exchanges, let's put it like this, because not all the time this is happening uh, in, in, in real life, but you would have to uh, already work with the group, you would have to know what the group uh, wants to do, and then you would create a program together with the group. Uh, you would see, you would know who knows how to do what, you would know uh, who uh, wants to learn what, and then you would, together with the young people, uh, plan out and implement the program. And when I'm saying implementing the program, I'm saying that they are actually having an active role during the program and they're uh, doing their workshops. Now, whether uh, it's a youth worker or not, uh, not all the uh, youth exchange leaders uh, are youth workers, but we'll see later on, they should have some experience or understand some key bases uh, of, of youth work. Um, another really, really important thing that it's a stepping stone and then sometimes this is the first international activity for young people. Um, it's the first time they're maybe going outside of their country and uh, it's quite, let's say, welcoming uh, environment for them to go because of this uh, preparation time, because uh, this prep time is quite also important and you have the uh, opportunity to do the advanced planning visits the APV, which is basically uh, up to two days activity where the leaders of the youth exchange can uh, meet uh, where the activity is taking place. But they can also bring uh, one of the participants and they share what they want to do uh, and they together plan uh, what they want to do during the youth exchange. Another important thing is that uh, usually you would have some preparation sessions uh, before the youth exchange happens so that the group actually knows what to expect but also they're preparing the workshops that they will implement during the youth exchange. Now because of all this uh, prep time that is available and somehow expected, uh, this is a great opportunity also to include uh, young people with full possibilities and this is one of the key things that Erasmus Plus is promoting. Um, People could choose to go on a youth exchange or not because of various reasons. And then uh, these kind of activities uh, can really, really help them if they wouldn't or if they are not able to uh, go. And uh, so basically uh, the, the leaders of the organizations would help them out uh, to do it. Um, we're still saying that it's oriented towards learning, uh, but here it's more focused on personal and social competences. So it's quite focused on the young person that is uh, participating in a youth exchange. Uh, they would focus on discovering new cultures, new lifestyles, uh, the habits of people. And um, it's basically creating space for non-formal learning, of course, but informal learning here is quite important as well, because uh, you would have a bit more relaxed program than on, a, let's say, training course or some other uh, mobility youth workers, where you would make space for people to uh, speak to each other, to share their ideas, uh, to understand each other. So you would try out a lot of different things. Uh, still, they would have to be planned and you would have to have some kind of learning 
outcome, but you're giving a lot of space uh, to explore uh, either the host country, to explore uh, how the people are, uh, what the people are doing, and you would give uh, a lot of space to this kind of informal learning part. Also, uh, I like to uh, mention here this kind of process versus the result thing, where you want to have some kind of end result as well, but the process is quite important here uh, that you would uh, have a space for people uh, to try out things, maybe for the first time in their life, and to meet people that otherwise they wouldn't really meet. Um, if we talk about uh, the youth leaders, uh, they don't have uh, an age restriction, but they should be uh, 18 plus. Um, leaders should have some previous experience in, in youth exchanges and proper training. This sometimes happens, sometimes not really. Um, and we should really not uh, ex expect them to be trainers, but to know how to design a program, to know how to uh, implement some of the non-formal education sessions, uh, to understand uh, what uh, a youth exchange, uh, how youth exchange actually uh, looks like. Um, I had this experience where, uh, when I finished uh, one of the, well, it was basically my first training course on uh, leading youth exchanges. And then I did a couple months uh, later, I did a youth exchange. And I think we overstressed people. We just uh, copying what we were doing on the, on the training course and uh, young people were really stressed about it. But thankfully we, uh, we listened to them and then we kind of loosened up the program and it was fine in the end. Um, also the youth leaders are uh, preparing and implementing program with other uh, youth exchange leaders, but also with young people. So they're not supposed to be uh, disconnected from the group, uh, but they should help out the group. So together with their group, which is coming usually from the same country, they would then prepare uh, and implement uh, those sessions. Uh, and then usually uh, the youth leaders are uh, again, meeting uh, on their own and uh, discussing how to uh, continue on with the program during the youth exchange. They're also focused on the group because they're leading a group. A group can be uh, at least minimum four people uh, in the group and uh, the youth exchanges can be from uh, just two groups uh, to groups up to 60 people. And then basically they would be focused on the group and their learning process uh, during the youth exchange and they would also meet with them and they would uh, understand what they need and uh, how they would uh, continue on with the program based on what, they, what their feedback is. Uh, another difference is that uh, this is usually a volunteer position because the funding is a bit different for uh, youth exchanges. There is not a lot of funds. Um, some organizations maybe have some different uh, rules for this. But uh, in general, this is a volunteer position and uh, it's also quite interesting uh, or, or it can be quite beneficial to people that uh, lead this because this could uh, take them into uh, maybe uh, some different, uh, different, different activities where they could organize um, programs for maybe mobility of youth workers and so on. So it's also uh, a process for the youth exchange leaders uh, because sometimes this is the activity where they're first time in charge of uh, some people when we talk about the international, uh, international activities. Um, this is one of those things that is also in the program guide, uh, just to have in mind that the youth exchange uh, is not a holiday or tourism. Uh, somehow, uh, when we speak about the mobility of youth workers, this is not something that's quite debatable, but here you can uh, sometimes this happens that people just think, yeah, let's just find some people, open a call, uh, and they promote uh, the country and not the program, which is quite important. Uh, it's not just a party, and of course, um, it's not a training course. So it's a, still a planned activity with learning outcomes, which uh, focuses on young people and gives them space to explore uh, different uh, cultures and different ideas. Um, so I see some of the examples uh, that we that we had, and this was one of my actually uh, first youth exchanges that I've done. Uh, you can see me here. I didn't have beard back then, uh, 
relatively long time ago. But this was quite interesting actually, because um, it was a bilateral youth exchange between teenagers from Serbia and Portugal. And um, so they were all minors and it was about environmental protection and youth cooperation. And uh, for the Portuguese group, it was the first time they're going outside of the, their country uh, the Serbian group, most of them, first activity of this format ever. So we focus heavily on uh, preparation time. Um, advanced planning visit is not something uh, that you uh, need to have, but it's uh, something that you can, and it's often a smart thing to do, especially in these cases. Um, so we did it, and we had uh, five meetings in each country to prepare workshops with uh, groups that they will do during the youth exchange and we would communicate with the, the partners throughout all this time so have in mind that you need some time before the actual youth exchange even more time than the actual youth exchange to prepare uh, uh, all of these things and to prepare uh, the uh, young people for first of all culture shock and then to uh, for them to understand what some of the non-formal learning uh, is and uh, how, what to expect, but also to give them enough space to express themselves and to plan out the things that they want to do. Because sometimes during the youth exchanges, you don't really have enough time. And this is the trap that is happening that then the leaders are taking over everything and they're just doing uh, all the workshops for young people, but not with them. Um, another interesting thing that we did uh, was this youth exchange called Rise U. Uh, it was a multilateral youth exchange between young people from five different countries on social inclusion of refugees. Um, and what is interesting here that uh, it was part of a larger project uh, where we combined the mobility of youth workers and the youth exchange, where we actually had uh, training for youth exchange leaders on the topic of social inclusion of ref refugees. And uh, then from this group of people, uh, each partner chose who will lead the youth exchange that is happening six months afterwards. Uh, so they would get these uh, competences uh, to, to, to lead the exchange and to understand what, uh, what they should do and what are the differences. And then basically, um, even though it's, it can be a quite heavy topic, uh, what is also important that on youth exchanges you don't get stuck in one place all the time. You don't get stuck only uh, on the, uh, just, just the program. You would explore the space. You would go outside. You would go, uh, you would do a lot of outdoor activities. You would, through different topics, you would explore the main topic of the, of the youth exchange. And you would try to find uh, a setting that is really uh, kind of inspiring for people and that would make them relax and open to, to learning. Also here it was quite important because we are talking about the social inclusion of refugees that uh, we ma made sure that we are actually including some of the refugees and that we are uh, doing all the necessary preparations, both logistical and uh, the program wise. So we had uh, opportunity uh, for them uh, to come. And then we would hear also, uh, for instance, uh, meet uh, the participants of the youth exchange would meet uh, some of the refugees that were here in Serbia and they would, uh, for some of them, it was the first time they're actually thinking about the topic. And so basically that's where they, you, you would make space where they would have this kind of epiphanies and aha moments uh, during, the, during the exchange. Uh, I'm not uh, following the chat, I will open it now. It's okay, I'm, I'm following, You're following it. And, uh... Actually, uh, I already answered one question. There was a question about the number of people. Uh, mm -hmm. And there was one question um, to you. Um, so you mentioned already that the youth exchange should be planned and implemented by young people. And uh, Magdalena is asking, in case of the program and timeline of activities, if it's being prepared by facilitators and train or trainers, is it still considered as a youth exchange project? Well, technically, um, so we, um, if I'm getting this correctly, if uh, only the youth exchange leaders are preparing the program and just giving them giving the program to young people, 
um, you shouldn't really uh, do this because uh, then you're excluding young people from uh, implementing parts of the program and it's why it's called youth exchange so it's the young people that are kind of working on the peer level and uh, exchanging uh, their uh, lifestyles their view on many different things but then the, uh, sometimes they can't maybe they don't have the proper methodology or they don't have the tools and this is where the youth uh, exchange leaders are coming into place to help them out actually uh, to to do this but also, it's not expected from young people to do it all by themselves. It's a cooperation between somebody who is a bit more experienced and then the young people who are uh, coming to, to the youth exchange. Of course, in the project, now, ideally, you would even uh, include uh, the needs of the young people ideas uh, during the project writing phase. Sometimes this doesn't really happen and you get this, uh, you know, written timetable that is just being sent and then you wait for the approval. But uh, you can always uh, kind of, let's say, be flexible about it. And then uh, you can uh, still do what you planned for the youth exchange, but uh, involve young people. But uh, involving young people is the key, key aspect of it. So it should be done. Yeah. And maybe I would add um, that usually a youth exchange doesn't have trainers or facilitators. It's young people running the program and the youth leaders or youth workers helping them as much as needed but usually you wouldn't have trainer in a, in a youth exchange because it's not about training someone it's about young people spending time together uh, and exploring the topic of their common interest exactly um and this is something, like I said, what uh, we've been discussing before, that uh, just because uh, people see some methodology, they like to just replicate it, but uh, uh, you don't have to do it. Still, you can use those tools, but it's quite important if you do it with young people. Yeah. And there's one more question coming from Magdalena as well. Is there any rule, how many sessions per day should be implemented and how long one session should last? Well, this is also quite flexible. Um, if you would go on something that's usual for a day, you would have maybe like four, one and a half hour sessions. So this is uh, two sessions in the morning and two sessions in the afternoon. But like I said, on a youth exchange, especially, you can be a bit more flexible. And if you're going somewhere, if you're using the outdoors, um, then you can somehow do one session, let's say in the afternoon where you would explore a certain topic. It can be a longer session uh, where people can uh, learn about the place where they are in, but also touch some of the topics that they want to do for the day. Um, but usually, so it's maybe uh, five, six hours of, of uh, space for workshops. Yes. And I would add that there is actually no rule uh, in terms of amount of sessions on the length of the sessions uh, and it's I would say a lot also about actually talking to young people how for how long they want to have activities when should they start I saw projects where you know adults impose their usual working time and they say we need to start working at nine because it's already an hour later than in a school <laughs> and I remember having youth exchanges where we would understand that young people want to spend nights together and they, they, they don't sleep until 2, 3, 4 a.m. So then we would consciously start programs from 11 so people would have a certain amount of sleep and would be ready to continue. But we know that they already, that they, another evening they're going to enjoy each other and want to spend time together. And that's the big part of the youth exchange, having an informal time in the intercultural group. Exactly. Uh, once, uh, and this was a long time ago, we, we thought it would be really cool if we do an evening um, session with the young people without really consulting them about intercultural learning. Of course, they hated it because they didn't really plan to do it. But then later on, we, uh, we asked them and they gave us feedback like, no, don't, do, don't, don't ever do that again. Uh, and then uh, we understood that uh, we should really uh, get more feedback from them. This, is, this was basically my first youth, first youth exchange. And then we um, made a flexible timeline, a timetable and uh, 
you could ex actually see the young people were more comfortable and more open for learning once uh, they are actually asked and, and one day uh, they can contribute. But also, yeah, it's really good that you mentioned it. It's not just uh, program-wise, but also logistical things that can be uh, uh, asked. Yes, and we can, uh, there's one more question. You're doing a great job, big audience, I mean, <laughs> that you're asking questions, not waiting for the very last moment when we actually need to close the webinar. So there is one more question from Rosanna, and she's asking if uh, a teacher, if it's enough to be a teacher to be a good youth leader? Well, I would say that it doesn't have, you know, the, two, the teacher and the youth leader, they don't have to be um, connected at all. Uh, basically, you can be a teacher and understand what the youth uh, exchange leader role is. But just, be, just because you're a teacher doesn't mean that uh, you're, it gives you some kind of benefits towards it. Um, usually, uh, like what, what I said before, you would have to, ideally you would uh, already know how youth exchange looks like by participating in one, and you would go through some kind of training, uh, ideal for youth exchange leaders, that there's a number of them, and Najana will talk about this as well later on. And um, for you to understand how the uh, youth processes are uh, happening, and what one form of education is, and then, uh, Usually what you're just uh, getting in school is not something that uh, is connected to this, but I mean, I'm not going to go into those, uh, that, those examples of what you're getting in school or not. But yeah, I mean, as long as you have those things that I mentioned, then you can be whatever and then um, you, can, you can lead a youth exchange or be a good youth exchange leader. But also uh, what I said before, and I will underline it again, is that uh, sometimes it's, uh, for, for some leaders, the first activity where they're in charge of a group or uh, organizing uh, such international activities. So uh, it's also uh, for them a process. And then some people return back to do it more, uh, to do it again, so they can actually uh, get more competences out of it and uh, understand it better. Yeah, actually quite a, it seems like to be a, an, an, a usual path that people participate three, four times in youth exchange, young people, and they become a group leader because they perfectly understand what does it mean to be a participant and what support is necessary. And, and people who previously were participants in a youth exchange, I think, do the youth leader role pretty well because they know what it means and they know also how much space to give for young people to to, to participate and to run uh, activities themselves. And it's usually the next challenge then. When yeah, you participate three, four times, maybe you get, you know, yeah. a bit yeah. bored and then you want to do something else. Okay, thank you very much, Buja. And uh, we are going from youth exchanges more uh, to explore um, the key aspects of youth worker mobility, yeah? So youth exchanges for young people, youth worker mobility, uh, and mobility for youth workers. So inviting uh, Snezhana to share some key aspects and also a bit contrast with the youth exchanges. Thanks a lot. Uh, in the meantime, uh, with the duration of this webinar, I have a bunch of kids gathered in front of my uh, door of this uh, library. So apologies in advance for the noise. But anyways, hello, hello from this yeah, library in Portugal. My name is Nezana. I work as a trainer, uh, facilitator, but I like to say that it was youth exchanges who shaped me in this field. Yeah? So I'm a big fan still. Um, and I, besides being colleague to Lyman Senerius, I'm also Buja's colleague. Uh, we did some trainings together as well. And actually I did quite a lot of activities in that exact room where Buja is connecting now in their wonderful environmental center. Yeah? So there are some links here happening. Um, so indeed, I have a task to somehow contrast the youth worker mobility to the youth exchanges. And you will see that in the presentation that I have, I also actually mention youth exchanges quite a lot because I think often it's helpful when you put them together and see what are the differences directly in certain aspects that maybe the clarity comes more there. So I will also share the screen. And here we go. Just have that present. Very good, yeah. So 
the, what is the difference from youth exchanges when we look at uh, youth worker mobility? Um, and so this is actually a gift that I use very often um, because a lot of things are, are complicated and this is one of those. That doesn't mean that Puja already and I will not try to highlight some of the differences, but of course, you know, the, the lines are not so clear. Yeah, but still there are certain rules that can help when distinguishing one uh, between the other. So hopefully uh, our webinar today helps in that direction. And so when thinking about these five main differences, so this is based on my experience, I'm not quoting any reference or a publication. Um, one thing, and then I will go more in detail for each of them, is that uh, youth worker mobility, I would use mostly trainings as an example, focus on professional competencies. Yeah, so not personal, Buja mentioned personal competencies, but more profession, professional, more on that later that they have more fixed learning intentions. Uh, we saw with young people, you actually try to get to their needs and what they would like to learn and explore. And the, the youth worker mobility comes more with the already planned kind of intentions of the, of the courses. There is less focus on informal learning opportunities. That's another thing Buja was mentioning that they're very important for youth exchanges, still important for, for, for trainings for the youth worker mobility, but uh, less focus on that. They have more, I put hardcore inputs. That's something that we are quite afraid of in non-formal education. I personally like them a lot. Um, and anyways, there is more of them in the youth worker mobility. And uh, they actually have a role to support youth exchanges. Yeah, so training courses in a way, or in this field at least, exist to support the implementation of the youth exchanges. Yeah, now we go a little bit more into detail for each of them. So the difference one, focus on the professional competences. What does it mean by professional competences? This is competences that a person can use in their work, yeah, either in youth work or in training or being a youth leader of a youth exchange. Yeah, so it's not about their life. Of course, a lot of competences can be translated to life, but it's more really about their profession. Their knowledge, skills, and attitudes that are very important for them to conduct their practice. Yeah. Uh, also, youth worker ability is going in line with this. Very often have a certain practice during the mobility happening. Yeah. So if you have a training on uh, how to design programs uh, for youth exchanges, you would have a little bit of, of, of space for participants to practice that and maybe even showcase it to the others and get their feedback, yeah? I'm not implying in a lot of these cases that these kind of things cannot happen in youth exchanges, but they are somehow maybe more featured here. And there is also a stronger uh, emphasis on transfer, yeah? So there is, or it should be, it's a recommended rule of thumb, that you should have a certain uh, part of the program that is dedicated to participants already thinking how will they use these competences in professional practice, in, in their work with young people, and so on. Yeah? Once again, this might happen in youth exchanges as well, but to a different extent, this is really about action plan. Yeah? So that's the first one. Uh, it's difficult not to see the audience. Uh, I just see my colleagues, but hopefully you're still alive and, and following. Um, what I want to share with you is uh, that because I said it's about professional competences. If you're struggling to think of, okay, what would my youth worker mobility tackle, yeah, in terms of competence, there is a thing uh, that exists that is the ETS competence model for youth workers, and youth workers are the main uh, target group of the mobilities, which offers you attitude, knowledge, skills, and behaviors, yeah? So you can go read and say, okay, this is going to be about people being able to deal with ambiguity and change. Example, yeah, this is just to drop there. I mean, when you, your free time during the summer holidays, you might take up on the reading of this competence model. Um, different two, and more it says more fixed learning intentions. Um, now, because it's part of non formal education, and maybe this is where the difficulty comes, of course, it is flexible, of course, it does respond to the needs of the, of the target group, even if it's youth workers, but still. Mobilities often come with the already set intentions without consulting the participants first, unless it's a group, a partners that are joining the application, yeah? And then they can, of course, see what is beneficial for the people that work in their organization, yeah? But they're also based on the key policy intentions, profile group, and so on, yeah? There is less flexibility, but that doesn't mean that there is no flexibility. Of course, also the, the youth worker mobility should follow the participants, adjust the program, adjust the contents, adjust the methods, yeah? But there is something that is uh, preset, yeah? And then uh, that the learning intentions often influence the target group. Whereas in, in youth exchanges, you should have young people. I agree with Buja, sometimes it doesn't happen, but it's the young people who should say, this is what we would like to explore. And then you build a youth exchange on that. With a youth worker mobility, you often have intentions in mind, and then you look for exact participants uh, that would fit that, yeah? 
So it's something like this. I'm not sure if this metaphor will work for you for me. Yes, we have rooted flowers, but they still move. Yeah. So the things are not so fixed, but there are some grounds that are that are there already existing. Very good. Um, difference three, less focus on informal learning opportunities. Uh, as a trainer, I've often heard people saying, this is the best youth exchange that I've ever been to. Uh, and I'm not focusing here on the best, yeah. Uh, but it is, if I run a training, it's not a youth exchange, but it's difficult for people to get uh, this difference. And often they come to, youth uh, to a training, you see, expecting that they will get other people, you know, get, get to know other people, that they will discover different cultures and so on. And while this is still a process of intercultural learning, it's not uh, just about that, yeah? Even in youth exchanges, you have a topic that is being explored and then it's about young people discovering diversity and so on. But here in the training courses, that's just one aspect there. Um, so it's not just intercultural fun. Uh, there are less informal opportunities in youth exchanges that I was participating in and also organizing. You often, although informal mean that they're happening on their own, but still as a youth leader, you can set up spaces, yeah? So you can choose a venue that has a basketball court, that has a fishing, that has a forest where people can go and so on. Whereas in trainings, this is not so essential, yeah? And neither is that you stack up on 50 board games so people have something to do, yeah? So informal moments are not so essential, although they are uh, quite important. And then, um, oops, I moved, sorry. Uh, then there is also the thing that, um, sorry that there is less discovering of the local community. All the activities, arguably, of Erasmus Plus should be connected to the local community, but it's about engaging them and not discovering the museums, statues, parks, and so on. Yeah? I see the chat beeping with the questions, so do I continue or do we um, pick up on some of them? Uh, no, there was a, a question where I uh, already replied. Okay. To Claudia and then also Nerius posted some links to the ATS competence model for youth workers. Okay, so you just let me know if... Yeah. Okay, brilliant. All right, difference four, more hardcore inputs. Um, I think Lyman has already uh, said that in one of the answers, Buja as well. Uh, in uh, youth exchanges you have youth leaders, they might be facilitators of learning, so they might have the role. But in the training, you have trainers, yeah? So they're not just steering the process, facilitating the learning, but actually the expertise also comes from them, yeah? So that's one of the key differences. You will have expert inputs. They will be done either by the trainers or by external inputs or both. Still, you can have visiting experts. We had a youth exchange that I will, I will show later where we had an expert uh, coming to talk to us, but it's a different, different kind of input in that sense, yeah? It's more engaging, savvy and so on. Um, I purposefully put here hardcore in the, in the, in the brackets in a way it's, it's, it's a joke that doesn't mean that it's not part of non-formal education, that it's not interactive, yeah? So it's just poof, frontal input, but it just means that somehow the expertise coming from the team is more present, yeah? And it says more theories and concepts, I say here in a good way, uh, because they are the ones to support the practice, again, so it's not, not three frontal presentations but for the learning of participants through certain theories, concepts that already exist uh, in the field. Yeah. So this is a photo of our colleague. So this is how those hardcore uh, inputs look like. Uh, it's kind of a joke, but just to know, so again, that it's not uh, ex cathedra, but it's something that can be definitely more fun and, and engaging. Um, and the last difference in this uh, presentation as well, as I was saying, uh, youth worker mobilities are there also to support youth exchanges, among other things. So not just, but maybe just also to see this difference. Um, they are treated as support measures, so they enable youth workers to support young people and, and uh, actions that they take part in. Yeah? So develop the competences of youth workers to be able to run youth exchanges, facilitate them, engage young people uh, into them, and so on. Yeah? Um, they're based on identifying needs in the field, either it's the organizations or it's the European Commission, intentions and so on, but they are the needs that something is needed for youth exchanges to for a better quality. Yeah? And often they happen as a result of youth exchanges, which I will show in my examples. And these are some of the examples that you might have heard of. Yeah, Appet Appetizer, B3, Multi-Tools for Youth Exchanges, Cherry on the Cake, the Star of Europe, and so on, are some that are offered on the European level by the national agencies and Saltos, but there are of course many, many more that are, that are open, uh, offered by the organizations. Yeah. So these are the five differences. Uh, no, not everyone, everything was a lie, but in practice things uh, maybe uh, get a bit uh, clearer. 
So I want to, what I want to show you first is a youth exchange, as I said, that shaped me and made me. It's uh, called Coexistence and Understanding, or was. It was about young people coming together, discovering the diversity, developing understanding of other. It had four editions, yeah? So it was a youth exchange that it repeated. Uh, and participants themselves uh, uh, on one of those exchanges created an idea of the program. And I think this is where we also see a difference. Their idea was in the form of bullet points, some ideas scattered around. And indeed, this is how we build a program for the next one. But it wasn't a detailed practice program like often people do on the training courses. Yeah? And you see here on these photos a little bit how the activities look like. Yeah? Um, there is quite a lot of gathering, quite a lot of exploring and cart racing going on the cruise from uh, Turku to Stockholm, which is not something that you would often find, I think, in training courses as well. Now, based on this exchange, we developed a training course, which again had a several editions called Stop Improvising, Start Leading, because what we realized during the youth exchange is that there is quite a lot of quality lacking uh, in um, actually developing and facilitating youth exchanges. Yeah? Uh, and that was basically done to develop competences of youth workers to lead. Another training was also developed based on coexistence and co-understanding, and that was for facilitation of youth exchanges. Now, when I was choosing the photos, I realized that they don't differ so much. Yeah, when you capture a youth change and a training, if you apply non-formal educational methodology, you will have a lot of blindfolds, balls, balloons, and so on. But the idea here, there is an input. There is also people who are actually practicing their youth exchanges. They were showcasing it to others and, and so on. Yeah? Uh, and then another example was in Latvia, Nature in Hands of Youth, which uh, was about environmental uh, protection and uh, different ecosystems. And it was all about mushroom picking and planting trees and kayaking and bird watching and so on, and also developing board games. Yeah. Um, but based on that, and just on, on these board games, there's actually people that spend hours and hours into the night working on them. But this was the choice of the young people. So it was not the planned program that we said until 5 a.m. you will work on your game but participants themselves actually invested in, in doing that. And based on this, uh, we developed a project called um, Nature in the uh, Hands of Youth. No, that was the youth exchange, it was the Edu Gaming, uh, which was actually a training that Buja and I did together as well, one of the editions. It's to support youth workers to actually develop, uh, to develop competencies in game design and also to develop the games, yeah? Uh, so what you see here, see on one of the photos, is an expert input. Uh, and this input was actually a two-day input from an expert in game-based uh, design, uh, Gulasin. Um, and this was really one of the key elements of the program. Yeah? Whereas in the youth exchange, we basically just gave materials to the participants, gave them the games, and they started playing. Yeah? So the approach was also quite different uh, in that sense. Yeah? Um, so I think here is where I will wrap up. Not before I say thank you, of course. And um, I'm open to see if there are any questions, of course. Let me just stop sharing. Thanks a lot, Snesh. I think there were quite some examples so people could see both a youth exchange and a, and a youth worker mobility. In both cases, learning is happening. And I think what you were telling, uh, uh, s some part of the learning, even when you see photos, it looks kind of similar. It's experiential, it's active, it's fun. And both formats can have that. Yeah, it's, I think, probably then it's something that you mentioned at the very beginning. It's about um, the aim of the activity. So that a youth worker mobility is for youth workers, help them do their job better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while uh, the youth exchange, it's not necessarily job related. Usually it is not job related, uh, it is about social, personal competences. Uh, we had some some exchanges in the chat, but I was not uh, asking you because there were some formal uh, questions about the formats. Um, Claudia was asking, uh, they are doing uh, some uh, alumni uh, network linked to universities and they do some like summer summer activities. So we were, try, we were chatting and clarifying whether it's, you know, part of the university education still, uh, even if it's summer school or it's part of the youth field and i think also here to, to to clarify that we are here looking at youth field and formal education field of erasmus plus so erasmus plus is huge program and it covers um, secondary schools vocational education and training higher education adult education um, 
and uh, then the youth field is just one part of Erasmus Plus. And indeed, some of the opportunities that we are exploring may not be um, relevant or fitting some some of the some of the fields. Uh, yes, and I see the, the question about the requirements to get funding for Erasmus Mundus. I think we will not be touching on, on this. Um, I invite you to really look for uh, program guides uh, focusing on uh, Erasmus Mundus. Again, a different program yeah, from, the, from, from the youth field. So would there be any other questions on youth exchange? versus slash youth worker mobility. Ah, I think Thomas has a question. Um, is there any focus on in a youth worker training on developing child protection policies and the fields connected to something like rights and needs of the children? Um, I think that's a very specific question uh, for me to answer with certainty, I think, in that sense. Uh, I do know that they are quite, uh, what I was giving was were examples that are related to supporting youth exchanges, just to kind of highlight this link, but there are uh, many other activities that are focused on other fields. I know for a fact that there are many of them that are, that are focusing on human rights and human rights edu education, yeah. Uh, there are also some that are dealing with basically stre strengthening the capacities of youth workers for policy development, yeah. So I would say that they, they could definitely be this, this uh, working on the child protection po policy could be one of the, the aspects that could be worked on, yeah? In the training or other maybe mobilities when there is more exchange of practice, so maybe the people from the countries that already have it de developed or in, in the process of development or are curious can come together and actually exchange on this. So for sure, this is one of the topics that could be tackled with the youth worker mobility. Yeah, I also added a, a link to the uh, SALTA training calendar which is a great tool if uh, some of you are looking for opportunity to participate yourself. Uh, sometimes also uh, participating is the first step before you start organizing your own uh, training or other kind of format. So uh, you can see also how such formats look like and then you see if it's something that you yourself want to organize. I think it's similar to like we talked about youth exchanges that often you participate yourself in, in, in one of your training courses and then you go back and you see with your organization and your partners if it's something that you need, if it's something that would help you as organization and your youth work colleagues to grow and then you can partner up with others and, and, and implement such, a, such activity. I think maybe just to add line on us, I think that there are, because we're talking about topics, but there are really also many different formats. And I think this is a very positive thing about both youth exchanges and youth worker mobility. I think in the past years, we moved a bit from the format of five, seven, 10, 14 days, you know, three or four sessions and that's it, yeah. So there are also really a lot to explore that maybe we didn't really capture in our example so much, but of also blended uh, mobilities in that sense and, and also like spread through time and edu gaming was, for example, long term youth worker mobility. So it has a few mobilities and practice phases. So there is really a lot uh, there to be discovered in that sense. Yes. Thank you very much, Snesh. Uh, now, just before we finish the webinar, uh, I'd like uh, still to show what are the resources that people can explore and learn on our online course. So I will share the screen. And Nerius already posted the link to the enrollment if some of you are still not in that course. Um, and uh, there you can see that we have we cover all Erasmus Plus uh, key actions for the youth field. Um, so we have the general one, then youth exchanges, mobility of youth workers, and then we we'll also have um, a big module on strategic partnerships, structured dialogue, and a bit more on the application form for funding. So you can go to whichever you wanna learn more, either youth exchanges or mobility of youth workers, and then there, uh, each module consists of a number of uh, uh, video sessions, video, animated videos, discussion forums. You're gonna see some examples 
you're going to have some quizzes where you can check whether you understood it right. Um, and that's how you can learn uh, throughout the course. So inviting you to join. Uh, if you think you have colleagues maybe who are just starting some youth activities or never did Erasmus Plus project, feel free to join. Uh, and then in the autumn, we're going to have more webinars uh, linked to strategic partnerships, to uh, youth dialogue. And also in autumn, we are expecting some news concerning the new program. And once we will have some definite news, you will be able to uh, learn more about what to expect for the next year. So uh, then uh, I'd like to finish this webinar and uh, I'd like to ask then people who are attending it, you can write in the chat, uh, how was this webinar for you? Whether it was useful and what you're taking from it. And still, if there is a, a question, something to ask, you can still do it.